Well, horsepower was termed by the inventor James Watt in the 1700s. Back then, Watt observed working ponies and calculated how much power they produced or work done in one minute. So, without going into the history too much about that, which is not what this video is about, I'll now explain more about engine horsepower. Nowadays, there's a misconceptional belief that one horsepower of an engine equals to the maximum power produced by a horse. But this isn't quite the case. In fact, the average horse can produce more like 15 horsepower. OK, so because torque and horsepower are both very closely related, I'll first explain torque, which will lead on to my explanation of horsepower. So torque is just a term that we use to explain a turning force. And what do I mean by that exactly? Well, if we want to undo this nut, we're going to have to apply a certain amount of turning force. And of course, we have the tools for that. We can use this spanner to do so. But the correct way we work out the amount of torque, or the value of torque that is, is by using a very simple mathematical equation. And in this particular situation, where we are undoing the nut, that mathematical equation applies both to me and the spanner. And that equation is simply torque equals force times distance. And so what that means for us is the force that I'm applying to the spanner in the direction I want to turn this nut multiplied by the length of the spanner. To be more exact, it would be the length from the centre of the nut to the place on the spanner from which I am applying the force. That's an important note to take, because the equation doesn't mean to just take the length of the spanner. The force must be applied at the spanner's length if the whole length is to be put into the equation. But if I take that spanner again that's one foot long, and I hold it halfway and apply the force there, then because I'm applying force six inches from the nut, then we can only use that length for the distance in the equation. And this all makes sense because we know, don't we, that if we want to undo a tight nut, then it's not so good to use a short spanner. We either get a longer spanner or a long power bar with a socket to make undoing that nut much easier. Which is why to work out the torque on the nut, it's the force applied and the distance that that force applied has to be taken into account. So how does this all relate to the torque or the turning force of the engine? Well, we know when the engine's running, the crankshaft is turning. That's the point of the engine. So basically, the engine gets its torque from several different factors. First of all, as combustion occurs above the piston, forcing it down, that's converting the energy locked inside the hydrocarbons, petrol or diesel, into motion energy for the piston. And it's the movement energy of the piston in combination with the structure of the engine's crankshaft that gives rise to the amount of turning force or torque that the engine will produce. So to explain that better, we'll have to take a look at a few components within the engine. So we have the piston, and of course via the small end bearing, it's connected to the connecting rod. The other end, the big end bearing of which, is connected to the crankshaft journal. And as we know, the big end main journal is off-centred from the primary shaft, the shaft that turns on the crankshaft. And that's the point of it, it's a crank designed for turning. So the calculation of the torque of an engine then, is the force at which the piston has been pushed down by the explosion of combustion and multiplied by the distance between the main crankshaft journal, where this force is being applied, to the centre of the crankshaft, the shaft that turns. So compared to something like a huge diesel engine in a lorry, or a cargo ship, or something like that, which have huge combustion energies moving the piston, and large distances between where the force is applied on the big end main journal of the crank, to the main shaft of the crank, creating a huge amount of torque, compared to a smaller engine like a little two-stroke chainsaw, let's say, which as well as having less combustion energy, has a smaller crankshaft with a smaller distance between the main journal and the centre of the main shaft. 
please note at this point that I'm only talking about crankshaft torque. So it's purely engine turning force. I'm not taking into account any type of gearing system or any gearbox that's attached to the engine crankshaft to allow better torque at the wheels etc. I'm just talking about the turning force of the engine itself. So then, if we take into consideration the larger amount of combustion energy that a massive cargo ship engine can produce, coupled with this huge crankshaft from a cargo ship, where the distance from the centre of the crankshaft to the main journal can be well over a metre. And you could imagine the enormousness of one of the pistons and cylinders inside this type of engine, and the amount of combustion that they must produce forcing that piston downwards. So that incredible force times the metre of distance, and with this engine having multiple cylinders, then the turning force of this engine would be absolutely incredible. As an example, the maximum RPM for one of these engines is around 100 revs per minute. Compare that to a small chainsaw engine, which is anything from 6 to 9,000 revs per minute, producing an overall crankshaft torque of just under 2.5 newton meters, which is around 1.8 pounds feet. But despite the fact that the cargo ship engine is running at only 100 RPM, produces an unbelievable torque of over 7.5 million newton meters or around 5.5 million pounds feet. So where does this now all come in to explain the horsepower of an engine? Well, let's first take a look at what is meant by power. What does it mean exactly? Well, in our situation, power is the ability to do some work. Let me just delve into a better explanation of that. If we were to pull a bucket full of coal up a mineshaft using rope, at a nice steady speed, compared to pulling the same bucketful up the shaft, but at twice the speed, then when we do it at twice the speed, this is more power. Because we could potentially pull up two buckets of coal in the same amount of time, thus producing twice the coal. But, like in the first example, if we were to pull the coal up at the slow speed, but there was twice the amount of coal, then we'd be producing the same amount of power in the same amount of time. So for example, if it takes one minute to pull one bucket of coal up, thus allowing us to pull up two separate buckets in two minutes, that would be the same amount of power output as pulling up a large bucket of coal with twice the weight, but taking the slower time of two minutes to pull that large bucket up the shaft. Because ultimately, in both of these cases, the same amount of coal has been produced in two minutes. So another way of looking at power then, is how much work is being done per unit of time. Going back to our cargo ship engine then, we might say that because it only runs at a maximum of 100 RPM, that it's very slow and it won't get much work done. But remember what we said about the mine shaft and drawing up buckets of coal, then if we could somehow use an engine the size of the one off a cargo ship to draw up coal, then with all of that torque, even if this engine is working slowly, the sheer size of the bucket of coal that it would be capable of lifting would be incredible. And so even though it's working slowly, it would produce an incredible amount of coal per unit of time. And therefore, it would have a massive amount of power. So power, therefore, is basically how quickly the work gets done. And so now, going back to our engine, engine horsepower is simply the measurement of the turning force of the crankshaft multiplied by how fast it is turning per unit of time. And in this case, it's full revolutions per minute, RPM. We then divide this by 5,252. But what's this figure? Where did this come from? Well, if we plot on a graph the torque versus the revs per minute of a car accelerating, it would look something like this. And if we show horsepower on the same graph, you will see that there's a point at which these two intercross. And looking at the RPM value at that point, you'll see that it's 5,252. So that's why we use this value in the calculation.
So let's now use that to explain why a tractor engine and a racing car engine, for example, are quite different. So let's say then that on average a tractor has a 160 horsepower engine, but a Formula One car can have something like a thousand horsepower engine. Although in this instance, where the tractor has more than six times less horsepower than the Formula One racing car, it seems to have far more strength, more mechanical muscle. Well, I know there'll be the tractor's gearing taken into account with the pulling power of the tractor, but the engine itself will deliver more torque because of the way I've explained how the components within the engine are made. But it turns over slower than the Formula One engine. But you'd think that a race car engine, being almost a thousand horsepower, would have more engine power to pull things than the tractor because its engine has more than six times the horsepower. Well, the reason the race car engine can generate such a huge amount of horsepower is because of its ability to rev extremely high. They can rev up to 20,000 RPM. Whereas a diesel tractor engine would rev at around something like 1,500 RPM. That means the race car engine revs something like 13.3 times faster than the tractor engine. Then of course, if it's revving extremely high, then it's producing more revolutions of the crankshaft per minute, and therefore it's producing more work per unit of time. It won't have as much torque as a large diesel engine out of a tractor, and we can prove this again with a simple equation. So to work out the engine torque, we simply multiply the horsepower of the engine by the 5,252 intercross RPM value and divide it by the RPM of the engine. So let's start with the Formula One racing car. We've got the 1,000 horsepower value and we'll times that by 5,252 and we'll divide it by the 20,000 RPM it's capable of. This brings out a value of torque of 262.6 pounds feet. Let's now take a look at the tractor engine. With its horsepower of 160, we'll times that again by 5,252 and divide it by its 1,500 RPM. We then get a staggering 560.21 pounds feet of torque. That's more than twice the amount of torque that the racing car engine produces, despite the fact that the racing car engine has more than six times the horsepower than the tractor. So now we have an appreciation of the differences between torque and horsepower. Torque is a necessary part of the equation in calculating horsepower, and at the same time, horsepower is a necessary part of the calculation in calculating torque. To put it bluntly, they are very much related. So next time you see an engine, and on that engine it says how many horsepower the engine is, remember that this isn't always a good sign of its turning force or its torque. But now you've got the equation, you can work out the torque of an engine and see just what the turning force will be, if, in any given situation, that turning force is the most important thing required. Other than that, the horsepower will represent how fast this crankshaft is turning. But of course, there's far more to torque and horsepower than what I've mentioned here. I've only covered the very basics. But I'm hoping now that you'll at least have a better understanding. And if you like that video, then you might like this one. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.